Today, lesson 2A, we're continuing on in our geometry standards from 7th grade today, impact of scale factor. Please make sure that you have your uh, packet open up to this lesson and you are ready to go. Our focus today, our daily learning target, you will be able to find a side length and area of similar figures. Uh, language target, uh, you'll be able to explain how to find the scale factor of similar figures. So if we have you do some shoulder partnering, uh, that's where your focus will be when you're talking with your shoulder partner. And one of the many reasons why you're learning this, one might be finding the height of something that is hard to measure, like the height of a tree. All right. So yesterday we talked about the idea of uh, scale factor and scale copies. So we ended yesterday with something like this, where you had a, uh, a, an original figure, in this case a square that is five by five, it's that red one there. And then uh, you apply a certain scale factor, in this case a scale factor of three. We talked about the fact that when the scale factor is larger than one, we know we're creating a figure that is larger than that. And uh, so three times five is 15. So each of the side lengths uh, of that square, we apply the scale factor of three. So that made that 15 by 15. That's kind of how we uh, ended yesterday. So that's the original figure. And the blue one is the scaled copy. Well, today we're gonna dig a little bit deeper into uh, some terminology when we're talking about original figures and scale copies and scale factors. So here the uh, triangle DEF is a scaled copy of triangle ABC. So triangle ABC was the original. We did something to it to create uh, triangle DEF. And in fact, we used a scale factor of 1.5. So what that means, remember from yesterday, is that we multiply each side length by 1.5 to make the side lengths of triangle uh, DEF, okay? So the first new thing that we're gonna define today is corresponding parts. By corresponding parts, we are referring to part of the original figure that matches up with a part of the scaled copy. If you have any blank areas in your notes, uh, make sure that you please fill those in. Okay, so what exactly uh, does that mean? Well, for example, uh, side length AB, right here, let me change my pen color, right here, that lines up with this side right here if we were to match things up. So what that means is that those are corresponding parts, or in this case, uh, corresponding sides, okay? Uh, so let's break it down to the very simple part. What point is a point that corresponds to point A. Well, that would be point D. Point A, point D. Those are the ones that match up if I were to move uh, triangle ABC over on top of triangle DEF. Corresponding po point to point E would be point B. Corresponding point to point C would be point F. So do you think the shapes are the same size or different sizes? It should be obvious to you that these are different sizes. And the reason is very simple. Uh, the only reason, way they're going to be the same size is if the scale factor is 1. But the scale factor wasn't 1. It was 1.5. And there I'm just proving it to you. They are not the same size. But we do have parts that match up. Okay, let's go to angles. By angle A, we're referring to this angle right here. So the angle that matches up with that, of course, is angle D. And that would be the three-letter uh, way that we would name the angle, but we're going to come back to that on another day. Um, what angle is corresponding to angle E? Well, that would be angle B. And there are several ways of naming angle B. It could be angle DEF or angle FED. And there also are several other ways of naming angle B, like angle BABC or angle CBA. Um, the next part, what angle is corresponding to angle C? And that would be angle F. And, of course, the other ways of naming those. So I 
you need to make sure that you are filling in these answers in your notes, okay? So we've talked about points. We've talked about angles. Do you think the corresponding angles are the same size or different sizes? So what we're talking about is, do you think that that angle is the same as this one or not? And if you've never seen it before, you might just be guessing, but they are the same. Look, angle A is the same exact size as angle D. Angle B is the same exact size as angle E. Angle C is the same exact size as angle F. They are the same size. So what we're trying to do here is we're going to try and generalize something when we're done. So now, what side is corresponding to AB? So this is side AB. I already kind of talked about that. Uh, it would be DE that corresponds to that, or ED, depending on which way you want to write that. What side is corresponding to side DF? Uh, think about that. That would be side AC or side CA, if you read it backwards. And what side is corresponding to side FE? And FE is right here. And of course, that would be BC or CB. So make sure you fill those in in your notes. And then I have a, another question for you. Do you think the corresponding sides are the same size or different sizes? Now, this one should be obvious. AB is not the same size. So they are different sizes. Same thing with AC and DF. Same thing with BC and EF. They are corresponding, but they're different sizes. So now if we sort of put all of that together regarding the size, the corresponding sides, and the corresponding angles, what is the same and what is different between the two shapes? Well, clearly, and we already did go through these, they are different sizes. As far as the side length, they are different, but the angles are or they were the same. So I ascertained that um, the corresponding angle stayed the same and the, cor and the size and corresponding sides are different. And all I'm doing is I'm using the provided sentence frame there. So a quick summary of something we talked about yesterday with regards to today. To yesterday we talked about if a figure has been reduced, in other words, it got smaller, we knew the scale factor was between zero and one. We knew that if the figure got larger after applying a scale factor, the scale factor had to be greater than one. And we also know that if there is no change to the figure, they stayed exactly the same size, the scale factor is one. So when a scale factor is not equal to one, this is the key, when it's not equal to one, the size of this shape always changes. It will be different. The corresponding sides also will change. They will be different, but the corresponding angles will always remain the same. All right, if you have any blank areas there, please fill them in. And let's move on. Let's go to number two. Number two says quadrilateral PQRS is a scaled copy of quadrilateral uh, ABCD from an earlier grade. You learned that quadrilateral is the name for all four-sided shapes, which both of those are. Uh, what do you think the scale factor is? I want you to pause the video, and then after you figure it out, go ahead and play the video to see if you're right or wrong. All right, let's see if you are right or wrong. The scale factor would be 1.5. So I believe the scale factor is 1.5. And the reason is because if I take just, even if I just take these two sides, uh, this is 1.5, this is 3. 2 times 1.5 is 3. 1 times 1.5 is that one. And um, we knew the shape got bigger, so we knew the scale factor had to be some value larger than 1. Okay. Uh, regarding the size of the shapes, the corresponding sides, and of corresponding angles, what is the same and what is different with regards to the two shapes? This should be pretty obvious. The size, that's different. The corresponding sides, those are different, but the corresponding angles are the same. Remember, back in the previous slide, if the scale factor is not equal one, we know the size 
and the corresponding sides will change. They will be different, but the corresponding angles will always remain the same. So I determined that the corresponding angles stay the same and the size and corresponding sides are different using the sentence frame there. All right, so go ahead and answer all parts to number three. Pause the video first. Now, in order to do this problem, we need to remember some things that we've already talked about today. First of all, it says this figure B is a scaled copy of figure A. And clearly, uh, figure B got bigger than figure A is, and figure A was the original figure. So we know lots of things at this point. So first of all, uh, what do you think the scale factor is? Well, it should be obvious to you that the scale factor is 2, because 2.5 times 2 is 5, and that will apply that to all of the uh, side lengths. But the scale factor is 1.5, or excuse me, is 2. Uh, part B says find the missing sides. Well, 1.5 times 2 is 3. And the other question mark over there, 2.5 times 2 is 5. Part C says find the missing angles. In other words, these two right here. Well, remember, if the scale factor is not equal to 1, which this one is not, we know the corresponding angles will stay the same size. So that means that one also has to be 53, because that one is. And we will know the other one has to be 82, because the one down below that, there's corresponding to it, is that. All right. Question D, what stayed the same? Well, we're kind of repeating ourselves here. Corresponding angles stayed the same. What changed? the size, and the corresponding size sides. So I established that the uh, corresponding angle stayed the same. I'm using the sentence frame. And the size and corresponding sides are different. Let's go to number four. Go ahead and pause the video. Answer all the parts to number four, and then play it when you're ready to go. All right, number four, it says, does it appear that figure Q is a scaled copy of figure P? How do you know? Well, uh, look, um, it, figure Q, which is this one right here, is uh, a scaled copy. So that's the scaled copy. So that means figure P is the original one. But here's what I notice. 10 times 1 half is that. 9 times 1 half is this. 6 times 1 half is this, and you could work your way all the way around, and you will see that since the scale factor is 1 half, we're multiplying all the side lengths in figure P by 1 half to get the uh, side lengths in figure Q. We know that it is a scaled copy. And we also could have figured out by the fact that all the corresponding angles are the same. Notice this and this and this, and this. So in this case, we really didn't need to look at the scale factor, but I did anyway. There's always gonna be more than one way of kind of figuring that out. So I concluded that figure Q is a scale copy of figure P because the corresponding angles are the same. Corresponding sides have a scale factor of one half. So I guess it's probably a good thing that I did talk about that because you could have done it that way as well. All right, let's take a look at number five. Figure two is a scaled copy of figure one. Notice also the figure two got bigger than the original figure one. What do you think the scale factor is? I'm gonna have you pause the video to see if you can figure that out. All right, so this one is a little bit tougher than the other ones because there aren't any clear uh, side lengths there, but sometimes we can play like little tricks here. So to get from point A to point B, we're going up one and over three. To go from um, P to Q, which are the corresponding points, that's up three. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Notice that if I go about it this way, this times three is this, this times three is this. So sometimes you can play little tricks like that to actually figure out uh, what the scale factor 
uh, happens to be. So I ascertained that the scale factor is three, and I just kind of showed you the reason why. Uh, what is angle A and what is angle D? Well, now we go to the fact that corresponding angles are the same. Uh, corresponding angle A lines up with P and D lines up with S, so that makes finding the corresponding angles pretty easy. Uh, angle A has to be 55 degrees, angle S has to be 30 degrees. Um, part C, if AD is 3.6, I'll just label it, how long is PS? Well, remember, we already stated that the scale factor has to be 3, so 3 times 3.6 times 3 will tell us what that side length has to be, and it has to be 10.8 because 3.6 times 3 is 10.8. All right, let's go to number 6. Please pause the video, answer all the parts to number 6, and then you may press play to see if you're right or wrong. All right, so we're told in number 6 that scale uh, figure 2 is a scale copy of figure 1. First question is to fill in the missing sides. Well, if we know that the scale factor happens to be 2, then we can use that to figure out that this is 8, this is 6, and this is 16. Each of these corresponding sides multiplied by 2. What is the scale factor? Well, I kind of already answered that question. That is 2. What do you know about the corresponding angles? And this is probably the fourth or fifth time we've talked about this. We know the corresponding angles will always be the same. And the reason is because the scale factor is not equal to 1. All right, so we have seen how the scale factor impacts the corresponding side length and corresponding angles of scale figures. We know that the corresponding sides changes by the scale factor, always changes by the scale factor. In this case, if figure P is the original, the scale factor happened to be one half, so all of the side lengths on P multiplied by one half will give you Q. Corresponding angles will stay the same. We know that because the scale factor is not a, uh, equal to one. But the one thing that we haven't really talked about today is how does it affect the area? How does it affect the area? Well, this is actually a two-day lesson, and uh, so we're going to stop right there, and we will continue uh, the rest of this lesson the next time. So at this point, after I do the quick review here, you would want to pause everything here. And this is a summary of what we talked about today. So we're going to stop right there. So pause this. And then tomorrow you'll start the video right here.